Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, I am uh, I'm here in Chicago, and uh, I was um, I'm getting ready for uh, a big race tomorrow. Uh, I'm running, uh, as you guys know, I've been a part of a uh, uh, what can only be called a Black Health Challenge, and in this this Black Health Challenge, uh, I have uh, just decided that you know I wanted to better my life and to get in shape and to uh, just feel good, you know, feel good uh, and kind of buck the trend. You know, uh, a lot of us, uh, I don't think in our community, I don't think we're as quick to want to uh, work out as much. I think we kind of hit a certain age where we, you know, when sports are in our past and we're not doing that anymore. Um, I know we as men, black men, we kind of get a little bit uh, complacent uh, physically and it kind of throws us off. Uh, black women, I think, you know, the hair thing, it's something to really think about because uh, I know I know a lot of women who don't work out because of their hair and their hair, um, you know, and uh, the, and that can cost you, cost you, you know, big time. Uh, if you don't do anything to keep yourself in shape, then, you know, obesity becomes a big problem, you know, which leads to heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all these other things. So um, I just decided I want to live. I don't want to go through that kind of, you know, stuff if I can help it. <laughs> So uh, that's why I'm running. That's why I'm doing this thing. So uh, tomorrow I'm running something called the Hot Chocolate. It's a 15K race, which is 9.3 9 miles. And uh, just so you know, I, I'm not a fast runner. I'm not somebody who's, you know, ready for the Olympics. I'm just just a brother that's trying to make sure I finish. And uh, when I finish, I, it just, you know, makes me happy. And I'll tell you, I've been lifting weights a lot. Uh, I decided I want to get back into weight training because what happens is as you get older, when you get in your 40s, your, your knees, you know, start to give you problems and stuff like that, ankles and little stuff like that. But the upper body's fine. My upper body is actually stronger than it was when I was 20 years old. Like I literally could like like outlift myself when I was 20. And it's a great feeling because for men, uh, especially for everybody, really, uh, but for men, especially weightlifting, it, it increases your testosterone levels, which just kind of helps you in a lot of different ways in terms of energy and you know, all kinds of stuff. So I just want to encourage everybody to, you know, think about it, you know, just start small. I, I just literally was taking baby steps and, and now that I'm doing it, I, I don't, I can't imagine living any other way. It's so much fun. But uh, anyway, um, let me go ahead and uh, break down what I, what I want to talk about. Uh, let's see. Lashana says, I want to start running. How do I start? I need to start walking distances. Yeah. Just start walking and then run a little bit. Just run till you get tired, then walk some more then run a little bit more, then walk some more. That's that's a good way to kind of have a, have a good balance between the two. You know, don't feel like you got to keep running when you're tired. Like when I get tired, I stop. When I get tired, when I'm huffing and puffing and all that, I will walk. Ain't no shame in walking. I'm telling you. And walking puts you ahead of everybody. You know, the majority of all people, most people ain't even walking. They sit on the couch. You know what I mean? So just, just as long as you're moving, you'd be amazed how many calories you burn just by running as far as you can, then walking and then running as far as you can and then walking and, you know, just kind of do that. Now I want to show you guys something. Uh, I want to talk about investing real quick. Uh, I'm going to get up super early for the race. If you want to follow us on the race, um, I'll be uh, checking in periodically, shooting up little videos, stuff like that. Pictures. You can check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is the real voice Watkins. Uh, so feel free to go to Instagram, the real voice Watkins um, and check this out. Okay. So this is uh, my dissertation. I, I, I love every now and then kind of popping it up. I, I came to my old place and I, I found it. And uh, the dissertation is what you write when you want to get your PhD. So you can see it's kind of this long document with, uh, let's see, it looks like some charts in the back. And, you know, let me see. Hold on. Wait, let me see. There's should be some images and stuff. Let me see here what we got. Um, yeah, here we go. Some charts and graphs and and data and analysis and all that. Well, anyway, uh, the title of the dissertation is Investor Sentiment, Trading Patterns, and Return Predictability, Presented in Partial Fulfillment of the Requirements for the Degree of Doctor Philosophy in the Graduate School of The Ohio State University. And my um, dissertation committee is at the bottom, Professor Andrew Caroli, David, uh, Professor David Hirschleifer, Professor Jayanta Sen. Uh, Jayanta Sen, I, I think he's doing really well. I think he's at NYU. <laughs> Um, Andrew Caroli was at Cornell last time I checked. David Hirschleifer is actually the most famous of the three. He's at some school in California. I got to check on where they are. But anyway, can can we read it? Actually, uh, Vernita, you can. Um, it will bore you if you ever want a good sleeping pill. 
then go find my dissertation. You can look it up online. Just look up Boyce Watkins and Ohio State University Finance PhD dissertation. And there's a database where they keep all the dissertations in a database. So, yeah, you can read it. Um, you know, I don't even, honestly, I wrote this thing. What is this, 2018? I wrote this 16 years ago. I don't remember what's in it. <laughs> I, I, I don't really remember what's in it. But I do know that I had to learn a lot of stuff to get to the point where I could write 160, 170 pages of, of financial theory. And, um, and here's one of the things I want to share with you about uh, investing. This is something that I want you to kind of, um, you know, uh, kind of process. Uh, T. Evans says you work too hard. Actually, I don't work too. I don't work very hard at all. When when you when your life when when you are living living and you've monetized your life, meaning that you're able to make a living from just being who you are, you're not working. I, when I'm talking to you guys, it's not like I see it like as a job. When I'm talking to you, um, it's just me having a conversation. And if you think about it. Uh, we have conversations all day long. Been, when you have a conversation with your friend, you don't say, oh, I'm working too hard, talking to all these people. I've been with my kids all day. I've been working too hard. I need to do four, only 40 hours a week with my kids. Like You don't think that way, right? No matter what you're doing, you're always living and doing whatever. Like So today I was watching the Alabama LSU game. I took a nap. I went and hung out with with my significant other. So so I encourage you, you know, when you talk about that big investment, that investment called your life and where you invest your time, um, invest it in a way where you can get in a situation where you don't have to work very much. Um, and what does that mean? That means figuring out who you are, what your passion is and what you enjoy and blending that together in a way where you can monetize that you can make a living from doing something that you really enjoy doing. So I haven't had a job in 25 years, honestly. So no, I, I really don't work too hard. I just I just talk a lot, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, so let me let me break down a little bit about investing. Uh, so so that I think that first point I made about investing your life and investing your time that's the biggest investment you make. The biggest investment most people make is their time, and they don't see that they don't see their time as valuable, so they waste a lot of it. But actually, um, in most financial equations, uh, when they analyze, you know, how wealth grows. Wealth is heavily connected to time. Time, the time dimension is a very important, probably the most important component in, in a wealth equation. So, uh, you know, a wealth builder and investor has a certain mindset. Part of that mindset uh, usually is deeply connected to the use of time uh, in a couple of ways. One, uh, most good investors don't waste a lot of time. Uh, so if you see me around, uh, I'm usually going to be doing something productive, but it's not so much work, but it's something that's got to add value, right? So it might be talking to my kids. It might be, um, you know, reading an article. Uh, it might be watching a video about something I want to learn. It might be talking to a business partner, whatever. Um, but uh, so so they use their time in terms of investing time. And then two, time uh, comes up in investing when it comes to just letting time play play out, letting the time build your wealth for you. If you give me enough time, I could turn anybody into a millionaire. Anybody in here, uh, you know, any of you, uh, you know, uh, uh, T. Evans, Marcus, uh, Kevin, uh, Vanita, Cold World, Max Studios, literally, um, if you just simply took the amount of money that you put, that you probably spent maybe on fast food, you know, and you gave an, enough time and you put the money in the right place, you you and your family could be millionaires. And it would just take time, time. Again, time grows money the way uh, time grows a flower. You you know, you can't plant up an ear of corn and have it grow in 10 minutes. But if you plant it and give it enough time, then the, the corn will grow. So that's one thing that investors, I think, understand is the power of time. Uh, other things that investors understand is that investing is is far bigger than money. Uh, it's about the ability to delay gratification. Delay gratification means I'm going to sacrifice today so I can have more tomorrow. Every dollar I give up today, I can have five dollars tomorrow. Every every ounce of energy I give up today, I get 10 pounds of benefit tomorrow. Uh, they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That ain't nothing but an investment statement. When they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, what they're saying is if you invest an ounce, then you can you can avoid losing a pound later on. Right. Invest an ounce today of prevention and you will get a pound of cure later on. You benefit. Right. So basically, an investor has a mindset where they're always thinking about controlling the future. Right. Um, remember, the future eventually becomes the present and then the present eventually becomes the past. So if I want to control the present, um, I can't. It's hard for me to control the present right now if I did not make a plan in the past. Right. 
So the present is typically controlled by people who were planning for the present back when the present used to be the future. 2018, especially if you are over the age of 30, you know, 2018 used to be way off in the future. Even if you're even if you're only 25 years old, you remember 2018 seemed way off into the future. Right. The people who control 2018 are the people who were planning for 2018 in 2006, you know, 2007, 2008. So the people who control 2035 will be the people who are planning for it in 2018. The people who control 2045 will be the people who are planning for it in 2018. The earlier you plan, the more time you have, the more you're able to be, accumulate resources to allow you to control um, that particular time period that you're talking about, right? So if you said, you know, I want to make sure my children never work um, and your children are six and you make certain uh, investments right now, then you can make sure your children aren't working by the time they're 30. That's 24 years. That's a lot of time to invest. If over that period of time, if you, for example, took, uh, let's say you took the amount you spend on your car note, let's say your car note is $350 a month, and you put $350 a month into uh, an S&P 500 stock portfolio over the next 24, 25, 30 years, you would have hundreds of thousands of dollars to hand to your children so they don't have to work, so that they never have to uh, worry about getting enough money for a down payment on a house. Most people can't get become, can't build wealth because they can't leap that fence. They can't go from renter to owner. Well, why is that? What are the barriers? Credit score and um, also um, down payment, right? But if you prepare now and give yourself time, your children will not have that problem. They will they'll be able to get fifty thousand for a down payment, right? Um, you know, so basically, time is critically important. Uh, investors are people that understand delayed gratification. They understand having a vision. They also understand patience. These are not values that are uh, pushed and perpetuated in our society. We live in a very impatient society. We live in a very me, 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 now, now, now kind of world. We live in a world where people are easily distracted. They don't have vision. They don't have focus. Most people, literally, if Cardi B um, stubs her toe, you know, then people are talking more about that than they're talking about their own future. If the Democrats and the Republicans get into a fight, they'll talk about that more than they talk about their own children. You know, if you see something on TV where some politician uh, offends you or you're happy because some somebody I got elected, uh, that's going to affect your your energy, your mental energy more than the things that are happening in your own household. And the reality is that if you aren't thinking about what's happening in your household, then good things are typically not going to occur unless you get extremely lucky. So, um, you know, waiting on lottery, waiting on winning the lottery and going work, trying to get an MBA contract and go work, hoping that someday somebody drops a million dollars on your doorstep and go work. Uh, you know, saving money does not work, really. You can't work for somebody and save your way to wealth. It's not possible. You have to have an investment vehicle. <laughs> Vehicles typically come in real estate, stocks and bonds and entrepreneurship. Those are the three most rapid fire vehicles that can allow you to accumulate wealth uh, over time, especially if you're patient and you give it some time. So these are some things that they don't talk about in school. You don't learn this in college, uh, in a university. You could be a business major, but they're really more so teaching you how to go work for somebody else's business. Uh, and it, we don't do that in the black business school. We're a little bit different. So that's the, why I'm having this conversation with you guys today as I get ready for bed. So um, anyway, I'm about to get out of here. Uh, hit the thumb up button before you go. Uh, the like button, share button, all that stuff. Also, if you want, if you're interested, you want to take my stock market investing class. As I showed you, my dissertation was on the stock market. So I know the stuff really well. Uh, you can get a free month. You can get started right now. It won't cost you a penny to get started. Uh, you can go to the black stock market program dot com. That's the black stock market program dot com. So I'm out of here, guys. Have a good night. It's good to see you. Talk to you soon. Peace.